Ladies, welcome to uh, my house, our house, Charlie and I. I wish you could all be here. I long to see you. I miss all of you. I'm so glad we had our IF gathering when we did, and I'm looking forward to the time we'll get to see each other again. So, that being said, obviously this is a very unusual situation, even what we're doing now, uh, but also just in terms of what has been going on with you and, and me also, but especially for uh, those of you out there. And I see some of you on Facebook, and I've seen the, ad, uh, the adaptions you've made, uh, the things you're doing with your families, and I just rejoice in that. I'm encouraged in that. I also know that there are some real heartaches. So I, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I was thinking about, okay, here we go. This is life, uh, the regular movement of life. Life, death, fun, rejoicing, celebrations, and then all of a sudden here comes uh, something totally different, unusual, deadly, coming towards us like this, and all of a sudden here we are. And, and we're already at this point, and there's this overlap. So now, not only do we have the regular seasons of life and what it brings, but we have this other issue that we're all dealing with, the co uh, coronavirus. And so it has thrown a lot of things into havoc for many of us and some more than others. So I'm not unaware of a lot of your struggles and I am aware of many of them also. But there is good news and We'll get, we'll get to the good news uh, shortly, but I want to start out with uh, Pastor Mike's, uh, his sermon on Lamentations and the Lament. A few weeks ago, I think it was the end of April, he said, Lament is a human, react, human action, a mourning for sin, for the sin and suffering. And I don't know about you, but certainly I've just watching some of the things that people are going through on, on the TV has just made me cry. And I know many of you are going through things. So uh, I went to Lamentations 3 because I, I think it maybe expresses what some of us may be feeling. I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his wrath. Now, we're not under God's wrath. He's not, uh, he's not showing his wrath to us, but we have an enemy, okay? He has driven and brought me into dark, darkness without any light. Surely against me he turns his hand again and again the whole day long. He has made my flesh and skin waste away. He has broken my bones. He has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me dwell in darkness like the dead of long ago. He's, and this is a part I thought uh, went with isolation. He has walled me about so I cannot escape. He's made my chains heavy though I call for cry and cry for help. He shuts out my prayer. He's blocked my ways with blocks of stones. He has made my paths crooked, but Okay, let's go down to 19. Remember my affliction and my wanderings, the wormwood and the gall. My soul continually remembers it, but this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke of his youth. And then over on 55, I called on your name, O Lord, from the depths of the pit. You heard my plea. Do not close your ear to my cry for help. You came near when I called on you. You said, do not fear. 
So as we're thinking about all the things we're feeling, it's certainly appropriate to go to God and let Him know how we're feeling, cry out to Him. But then we need to move on, not get stuck in a little uh, whirlpool of uh, self-pity or anxiety. And so if we look, if we come out the other side, we will see uh, that there is praise. Uh, I remember Mike saying, or I don't remember, certainly, but I did write it down and I liked it. Uh, he said, turning our emotions into lament funnels to God in prayer. So I hope you're funneling to God in prayer and that you're finding, finding some peace and some healing through that. So then let's go on to our identity because I believe there's a connection with our, uh, with our identity and who, uh, just who we are and why we should, uh, why we can trust God, all right, during this time. So I'm starting at Psalm 139, which you've, I'm, some of you have heard many times. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know, so think about the verbs in here. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways, even before a word is on my tongue. Behold, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before. So maybe we feel isolated, but it's Lord hemming us. He hems us in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it, for you form my inmost parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Then I skipped to 16. Your eyes saw my unformed sub substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, and I am still with you. So encouragement then in terms of where, who we are. So I want you to just think about that while I flip over to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Okay, so we're thinking again about the verbs, who we are even as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Okay, so then I go over to 2, chapter 2. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace. You have been saved and raised, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that one may boast, so no one may boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we may walk in them. On 18, for through him we, ha we both have access in one spirit to the Father, so then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, 
Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are built together into a dwelling place for God by his spirit. So as we see uh, in Ephesians then and also in, uh, in Psalms, we have our identification laid out here. Uh, not only are we created, formed, chosen, predestined, adopted, his workmanship, citizens and members of God's household, really, what more can we want? We have a great identity if we know Christ. But there is a problem uh, when it comes to keeping our, our thoughts in line with, uh, with Christ and God's word. And I wrote down, thoughts may fuel unhealthy emotions and vice versa. I know I've had some very unhealthy, <laughs> uh, sinful thoughts, not only during this time, but other times. So I've uh, turned to Jenny Allen's uh, book, Get Out of Your Head, Stopping the Spiral of Toxic Thoughts. And I've pulled out a couple of things that have been helpful for me. She says out of this book. What we're saying then is that how we think directly results in how we live. I'll read it again because I thought it was important. What we're saying then is that how we think directly results in how we live. So the question is then how do we think? So I'm going over here to Romans now. And certainly Romans has plenty to say about how we think. I'm in chapter 8, verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. So I'm thinking about setting our minds, and I was watching Dallas set up this uh, camera. So he has a nice tripod, and he's setting it in place so it doesn't move. So setting our minds on things of the Spirit is a matter of intention, really, of action. For the mind that is <clears throat> setting set on the flesh is hostile, hostile to God, but it does for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Verse 26. So then, I'm going to just race over here quick like a flash to Romans 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Will of God, that, excuse me, renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So, and then, let's see, now I race to Corinthians 10, 4. And I, I just love this one. For the weapons of our warfare, and certainly we're in a warfare, are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So take every thought captive. So the Bible dictionary says captive as the way in the way it's used here means subjugating thoughts to obedience of Christ. Think about capturing, grabbing a thought, putting it under Christ's, uh, under his 
design, under his obedience. It's hard. It's not easy work. But we do have help. We do have help. And so um, I would implore you and myself, which I, I'm working on this, even this morning as I was preparing. I get a, a text on my phone from somebody, of course, I don't know at all about, about somebody I don't know at all. So right away, my, my thoughts are kind of thinking, okay, what's going on with my phone? Um, just very, and then uh, uh, Charlie has a little coughing episode a little bit ago, and, and so I'm thinking, okay, I hope he's not getting sick. And so now I'm going to Philippians 4, and I'm going to start with 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness, and I've seen a lot of unreasonableness on Facebook lately and, in, and on the TV, be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Then, eight, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So I have to say, I have this little plaque which has um, a different version of, of uh, this verse, but it helps me. I can see it right from my bed. And the first word, whatever is true, usually I can't even get past whatever is true. The things I'm thinking are just often things of my imagination and a certain, based on anxiety I have. So what is true? What's true about you, about your identity, who you are, who we are as women? Okay? So I use this to help me, and I use actually a lot of little reminders. Here's one that I found in the freezer at uh, Grocery Outlet. And it's uh, a popsicle. Actually, the popsicle's not in here. It would have melted today. And it says, live with purpose and intent, as in you intend to devour. And this says this chili cow. And I would say, intend to devour God's word. Devour it. How are you going to know the mind of Christ? How are we going to know the mind of Christ if we don't know what his mind is, if we don't study the word? Lord? So, ladies, we need to be in God's word. We need to be calling and encouraging other ladies, and we need to, uh, to be looking at thinking, praying for what he has for us. Prayer, thanksgiving, rejoicing. So I'm going to read a prayer that I, out of Colossians, which is very conveniently uh, located right across from Philippians where I was. And I'm going to put it in a vernacular that will be a prayer for you and for me too. So, Heavenly Father, I'm asking today that we may be filled with the knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of you, fully pleasing to you, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May we be strengthened with all power, according to your glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, 
in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Be with these ladies now as they go about their day and the remaining time that you have in this time of, especially during this time of anxiety and changes, adapting. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>